I'm Ken Jensen, a member of the Harry Cell Leukemia Foundation. Hi, I'm Anna Lambertson. I'm the executive director of the Harry Cell Leukemia Foundation. It's good to be here with you today, Ken. And it's good to be here with you. I'm going to talk about how patients find reliable information about Harry Cell Leukemia, which we know is very important, particularly when someone has a rare disease like Harry Cell Leukemia. Yes, we've, we've found that there's an extremely high degree of thirst, I would phrase it that way, for additional and fresh information about hairy cell. We have a patient seminar every year, and it's usually attended by about 100 plus patients. And these patients just want to interact with other patients and ask questions of the doctors who are experts in hairy cell. That's right. Uh, patients reach out to the foundation on a weekly basis, almost every couple of days, we hear from patients all over the world who maybe they've been recently diagnosed, maybe they've relapsed, um, and they are truly thirsty for information. Often, particularly when a patient is first diagnosed, they have never heard of hairy cell leukemia prior to their diagnosis. Their family and friends have never heard of this. Um, they have to sort of spell it out for, um, for those around them um, because it's such a rare disease and most people haven't haven't interacted with this. So they reach out to us wanting to find information uh, other than the information that they're getting from their doctor. And we know how important it is for uh, a patient and the doctor to stay in close communication. And uh, certainly information that they find from us or you know from other organizations should never replace that information. But um, you know they're really looking to increase their own knowledge and feel more empowered and more comfortable in asking questions with their doctor and uh, in making decisions with their doctor about what treatment they pursue. Yeah, we found in particular at the patient seminars that a lot of the newly diagnosed patients just feel comfortable that they are meeting somebody that has had the disease for a long time. That's and right. the same thing with their loved ones that have come to the seminar with them, that they feel much more comfortable if they're meeting somebody in person rather than just hearing about them on TV or some other way, right. that it has the disease. I do think there seems to be a lot of comfort that comes from meeting other patients who have experienced um, this, this same disease and you know walked, sort of had the same journey, even though we know that even between patients, there are differences in how patients experience hairy cell leukemia. Uh, there may have a different diagnosis. They, some patients relapse, others don't. Um, some patients have complications, um, but, uh, you know, just the similarity in symptoms, I think, allows patients to learn quite a bit from other patients. And, you know, as you said, they, they are thirsty for information, and they do find a great deal of comfort from interacting with other patients who have had the same experience. Yeah, one of the questions we get are the, how have patients can become more involved in their own treatment or in other ways. And I found myself that being involved in what we have, the foundation has a data registry for patients. We now have over 300 patients in this registry. And this is a way that a patient can provide information that can be used for research that will help potentially himself, but also other patients. For example, also I was in the uh, cladribine trial back in 93 and cladribine then became one of the primary methods of treating hairy cell initially. And that treatment by cladribine that was mainly done by other people in those trials allowed me to begin to remission for 16 years. Which I think really speaks to the importance of clinical trials yeah. and patients participating in clinical trials. Um, you know, we do have patients reach out to us on a regular basis asking what clinical trials are available to them, and uh, certainly we always encourage them to talk to their doctor and their healthcare team about clinical trials uh, for which they may be eligible and could, could be a good fit for them and their particular diagnosis or treatment needs. And, uh, you know, we know that clinical trials can play a really, really important role in the development of new drugs and new treatments. And in hairy cell leukemia, like many rare diseases, we know, at least now, we don't have a cure. There are effective treatments, but there's still no cure. While patients can experience very similar symptoms, um, patients do 
have very different experiences along the way, as we've said. And we need to have treatment options that can address patients' unique journeys with hairy cell leukemia. Some patients respond well to standard treatment, to cladribine, for example. Um, others haven't, or they did it first and then relapse. So, come and relapse. So, such an important role in in helping us, in helping doctors and researchers develop new treatments. Sometimes patients are a little skeptical, perhaps a little nervous about joining trials, and we know that the outcome of that trial may or may not help them. It may help other patients down the road. But what I've heard from patients who have been in clinical trials is this really gives them a feeling that they are playing a role in, in their diagnosis and their treatment. Yeah, I might it, add to that. Yeah, is please that do. I am also involved in uh, not clinical trials, but also research studies and other registries for general cancers. Mm -hmm. And general the research that's done in general cancer sometimes can be applied to hairy cell. And some of the drugs that are used in hairy cell now were actually generated in another manner. So that, for example, I'm in a registry for family cancers with LLS, mm -hmm. the NIHI, and the University of Chicago. I and that just makes me feel better that somehow I'm going to be helping other people. And I think that's a really important uh, distinction to make as well is these clinical trials will impact drug development and treatment development for hairy cell leukemia, but could also very well impact treatment development for other cancers, as yeah. you as you point out, I think that's a very, very important point to make. 